Uh, now let's talk about type 1 hypersensitivity is associated with food allergies. So here is the digestive system. And when we take in food, specifically proteins, those proteins should be broken down into single amino acids by proteolytic enzymes secreted by the digestive system. The stomach, the pancreas, the lining of the intestines, they uh, release enzymes, proteases, which should break down proteins into single amino acids. But not all proteins are broken down into single amino acids. Sometimes proteins are just broken down into small peptides, and those peptides can uh, be absorbed into um, lymphoid tissues in the intestine. So the secondary lymphoid tissues, such as the GALT, gastrointestinal associated lymphoid tissues, and there are mast cells that you find in the GALT and are, are in the connective tissue of the intestines. And so some of those proteins and peptides can actually be absorbed into those structures where they could encounter mast cells. And if those mast cells have antibodies to, for example, peanut proteins or milk proteins or shellfish proteins, if an individual is allergic to one of these types of foods, it's because their mast cells are covered in IgE that binds proteins or peptides that um, will that come from these foods. And these proteins or peptides can um, possibly get absorbed through the lining of the epithelium and be uh, exposed to mast cells. So if the mast cells are there covered in IgE that recognizes peanut proteins, then these mast cells will degranulate in response uh, to uh, the allergen. If that occurs, then you're going to get mast cell degranulation in the circulatory system. So the localized effect would involve uh, fluid movement uh, into the circulatory system, uh, contraction of the smooth muscles, and this would induce vomiting and diarrhea. So this is a normal response to a pathogen, uh, but this is not a good response if we're talking about an allergen. So this could be a localized effect just to the uh, digestive system, or sometimes the allergen will actually enter the circulatory system. So when you eat uh, these substances, they could, in theory, uh, be moved from the digestive system into the circulatory system as, for example, peptides. And if that occurs, those peptides can travel at other places of the body and cause mast cell degranulation. For example, um, if these proteins or peptides will uh, can migrate to, to the skin, they would cause mast cell degranulation in that part of the body. So sometimes individuals who eat allergens break out in hives, and this would be caused by mast cell degranulation in the skin. How did that occur? The allergen travels from the circulatory system to the epidermis via the, via the um, the travel from the digestive system, sorry, into the circulatory system into the uh, dermis and causes mast cell degranulation. So allergens can travel from one part of the body to the other. And again, if mast cells are there covered in IgE, those mast cells could degranulate and cause inflammation. Um, also, uh, individuals who have food allergies can go into anaphylactic shock, again, because allergens can be taken in to the circulatory system and cause, you can have systemic inflammation, systemic mast cell degranulation all over the body. Um, which would uh, lead to uh, collapsed blood vessels, swelling, edema in the throat and the tongue, bronchioconstriction, making it very difficult to breathe, as we saw in the last video. And again, the treatments, as we mentioned in the last video, is epinephrine, an EpiPen, which reverses the effect of um, histamine on the blood vessels. So it, uh, epinephrine will, ink will um, decrease vascular permeability. You will get reestablishment of the tight junctions um, between the endothelial cells that line the blood vessel walls and um, not uh, it will hopefully start start uh, reducing the edema and the swelling that's occurring throughout the body. There are tests for type 1 hypersensitivity which involve injecting minute quantities of allergens into the skin to see if mast cell degranulation will occur. So if an individual is injected with an allergen, and that the mast cells in the skin lack the IgEs that recognize the allergen, then uh, it is likely that the individual is not allergic to that uh, allergen. But 
let's say the individual has IgEs that recognize this allergen and injecting into the skin will cause mast cell degranulation locally in minute quantities. And if that occurs, you're going to have a reaction in the skin and uh, really two reactions. Because if you remember, mast cells um, immediately release their granules causing an effect by releasing substances like TNF-alpha and uh, histamine. And what you get is what's called the wheel and flare reaction. So you get the swelling that happens within minutes. You get this redness that occurs. And this is all because of changes in the blood vessels uh, due to histamine release, for example, uh, and mast cell degranulation. You're also going to get what's called a late phase reaction because once mast cells degranulate, they will also begin to synthesize um, cytokines and chemokines. They will begin to synthesize prostaglandins and leukotrienes, and you will get inflammation continuing hours later. And actually, that inflammation will even be um, more intense than the immediate degranulation. So you get a large area of swelling and redness um, due to the prostaglandin release and the leukotrienes and the uh, invasion of uh, immune cells into the site.